recognize Mr. Cardenas, our new ranking member here, for uh, five minutes. In minutes, I become ranking member. Uh, thank you, Chairman Duncan, and, and also ranking member DeGette uh, for holding this hearing. And I want to thank uh, the panel, um, our second panel today, of witnesses and experts to uh, enlighten us with what's going on out there in the real world. Um, it's interesting to me that Republicans are so dead set on weakening agencies' ability to regulate. Uh, when I can think of many examples of standards and regulations protecting the health and well-being of American children, men and women across our country uh, for generations now. Uh, take lead gasoline as an example. Despite knowing that lead was a poison, industries uh, such as automaker industries and oil companies and chemical giants said that, well, low levels of exposure to lead and gasoline wouldn't harm the public. Uh, well, in 1973, the EPA began an effort to phase out leaded gasoline, and within a decade, new vehicles were designed to run on unleaded gasoline. Um, to each one of the panelists here, do you agree that it was a good idea to take lead out of gasoline across America? Start to my left. Um, well, that, I represent the appliance manufacturers, so it would just be a personal opinion, not who sure. I represent. Uh -huh. Good idea or bad idea? Um, I, I'm really not an expert on that, but I would say it would be a bad idea to ingest lead and have lead in anything that you'd want to Thank it's you. Not a, it's not a good chemical to, be, uh, to have ingested. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think taking lead out of gasoline is one of those things you could prove is beneficial to all. So Beautiful. That's my opinion. Thank you. I have two children, very happy they grew up without lead and gasoline in the yes. environment. Thank you. Um, good to see leaded gasoline go, but the substituted compound was MTBE, which caused problems of its own. So we need to think big picture. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more about we need to think big picture, especially when it comes to the health and well-being of the American people. Um, imagine if Congress meddled with the EPA's process, rendering them unable to do their job. Um, so getting the lead out would have not happened had they not been allowed to do so. While banning lead and gas is different than energy efficiency standards, it's a reminder that when we allow experts like the DOE or EPA to regulate and to do their job, when we prioritize the health and safety of consumers is a good benefit for all. Uh, allowing the DOE to do its job will protect the health of, cons of cus consumers by cutting down emissions. It will also save consumers money. As many of us recognize, enhancing energy efficiency directly contributes to the affordability of the grid. According to the Department of Energy, its energy efficiency actions under the Biden-Harris administration will save Americans about $570 billion over the next 30 years. Uh, that's good money for Americans to be able to keep in their own pockets. Those utility savings are significant for family, families, particularly those that are low and moderate income families in all of our districts. Um, Mr. Uh, Delasky, in your testimony, you discussed the impact that energy efficiency standards have on American families. For constituents at home who may be struggling to wrap their heads around the relationship between federal efficiency standards and utility bills, can you break down how strong energy efficiency standards translate to lower utility bills for households, particularly those that are low and moderate, moderate families? The typical household spends about $500 less a year on utility bills because of existing efficiency standards. Updating those standards in the months and years ahead has the potential to reduce utility bills on an annual basis for an average household by hundreds of dollars. That's real money that helps households, particularly those on tight budgets, meet, make ends meet month to month. Yes, um, especially those families who their only income might be Social Security, like many of our seniors. So uh, thank you for that answer. My district has nearly 140,000 renters. And as you mentioned, renters are not always able to choose their appliances. Can you expand on how robust appliance standards help ensure that renters benefit from savings on their utility bills from, from more efficient appliances? Often a, a landlord doesn't have an incentive to buy an even slightly more expensive appliance because they aren't going to be the one who saves on the utility bill. It's the renter who's going to save, who typically pays the utilities. So the standards ensure that, that that landlords are buying reasonably efficient appliances to help keep costs down, uh, and that benefits uh, renters who are disproportionately low-income households. Okay. Uh, my time uh, expiring, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 
Chairman yields back. It's interesting that the same year they took lead out of uh, gasoline, they, Jimmy Carter's administration and President Biden and Senator Biden voted for coal as a power generation source in this country, not only gas. I now recognize Mr. Wahlberg for 